Okay, so like I said, we're going to go back to chapter one here and do a little bit of review. If you would like to follow along with me in your textbook, I'm going to be skipping around the chapter assessment section, which starts on page 39. Crazy, right? Going back to page 39. So we're going to start with the material from 1.1. This was all about what rational numbers are. Remember, rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a fraction, so positive or negative. These can be fractions, these can be decimals, they can be whole numbers, but positive and negative, that's the new thing. So first thing is absolute value. And remember, absolute value is when you have these little bars. So if I had a three and these bars, remember, absolute value is how far a number is from zero. So on a number line, if I had zero, three is here. So the absolute value of three is three. The absolute value of negative three, number line, there's my zero, one, two, negative three. It's still three spaces from zero. So the absolute value of negative three is also three. So absolute value is always positive. Remember that. So if you were asked to let's say compare two numbers and say which was greater, you could do that as well from this lesson. So an example of that. So let's say, for example, I had the absolute value of negative two, that's a blank, and negative two. I'm gonna put it in parentheses so we know that's negative two. So absolute value of negative two and negative two. Which symbol are we gonna use? Right? Well, we know the absolute value of negative two is positive two. So now we have positive two and negative two. Which one's greater or are they equal? We know that positive two is greater than negative two. So this would be our answer, All right? We could try another one. What if I had this? Absolute value of 1.7, oh, I'm sorry, I want to make that more of a line and not a parenthesis. There we go, with a negative sign on the outside, that's our blank. And then negative 1.7. So the absolute value of 1.7 with a negative sign and negative 1.7, which is greater. Well, we know the absolute value of 1.7 is just 1.7. And then we bring that negative sign down, right? So now negative 1.7 and negative 1.7 are equal. So don't get confused with this negative sign here. If it were inside like this, then yeah, the absolute value would just be 1.7. But since it's on the outside, you figure out what's the absolute value of this first, and then you bring down that negative sign, all right? So that's 1.1, let's do 1.2. So I'm gonna actually do 1.2 and 1.3 together. Remember the difference between an integer and a rational number. I just told you rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction, positive or negative. Can also be a whole number, doesn't have to be. Integers are whole numbers. So no decimals, no fractions but they can be positive or negative. So 1.2 and 1.3 are just one is adding integers, one is adding rational numbers. I'm just gonna show you how to do both together because rational numbers includes integers. Now, the rules for adding positive and negative numbers, if you've forgotten, let's say we have the same sign, right? So if I have the same sign, we'll start with those, right? You just add and keep the sign, right? So for example, I'm just going to, and this is all adding right now. So we're not doing any subtraction yet. So we're going to add and keep common sign. So for example, if I had negative 32 plus 
negative two. I'm gonna add those two, that'd be 34. And I'm gonna keep my common sign, which was negative, negative 34. That's how you would add. Now, if they were rational numbers and not integers, these are integers because 32 and two are both whole numbers, it would be the same thing if they were rational numbers. So for example, let's say, let's get an eraser out here. Let's say instead of 32 and two, I had a decimal because I like decimals better. Let's say we had negative 1.6 plus negative 2.4. So same thing, add them. 1.6 plus 2.4 is going to give you four. And then you keep your common sign, which was negative. If they were both positive, you would have kept it positive. That's your answer. So that's how to add rational numbers if you have the same sign. Okay, so we're still talking about sections 1.2 and 1.3, which is adding rational numbers and integers. But we just talked about if you have the same sign. So now if you wanted to add, we're still adding. If you wanted to add numbers with different signs, little different, couple more steps. First step is we're going to find the absolute values. Oh, I spelled absolute wrong. There we go. Value. All right. Then we'll subtract. So I'm going to walk you through each step if we did it. Let's say if we had the problem negative 15 plus 5. Now, some of you may already just be able to look at it in your head and say, oh, it's negative 10, which is 100% the answer. But if you want to go back through the steps that are in your notebook again, we're going to find the absolute value of these. So absolute value of both numbers is 15 and 5. All right. Second step, subtract. We're gonna subtract the smaller number from the biggest number, always. So do that, we're left with 10. Then you keep the sign from the greatest number. Greater number. The greater number was the negative 15, so our answer is negative 10. All right, but again, some of you could have looked at that from the beginning and said, okay, I can visualize a number line. So I'm at negative 15 and I add five, that's gonna take me to negative 10. Simple. Okay, so since rational numbers includes fractions and decimals, we just did a decimal when we were doing same sign. So now we'll do a fraction. Let's say I have positive nine cents plus, I'm using the parentheses for the negative sign, negative four fifths. Now we know before we add or subtract fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So I would put a common denominator of 10. So we're gonna multiply this by two. Our new problem is nine tenths plus negative eight tenths. All right. So we have different signs. So remember, we're going to find the absolute value of each of those. I'm going to split this down the center. Absolute value of nine tenths is nine tenths. Absolute value of negative eight tenths is eight tenths. Then we subtract. We're left with one tenth and we keep the sign from the greater number, which was the nine tenths and that was positive. So our answer is positive one ten. There you go. Now we're going to do 1.4 and 1.5 together and we're done. 
So 1.4 and 1.5 are all about subtracting integers and negative numbers. I mean, integers and rational numbers, sorry. Now, when you're subtracting, the first step is to just rewrite it as an addition problem, and then you do it just like we've been doing the addition ones. So for example, if I had positive 8 minus 18, I'm going to rewrite that as an addition problem, which would be 8 plus negative 18. And now we know how to do that. We just did it. We're adding numbers with different signs. So get the absolute values, 8 and 18, subtract 18 minus 8, which is 10. Keep the sign from the greater one, negative 10. That would be our answer. Again, you could also imagine a number line. You're at 8, you subtract 18. That's going to take you to negative 10. One thing I want you to remember, though, when you see something like this, negative 16 minus negative 5, whenever you have a negative right next to a subtraction like that, you treat it as an addition sign. So this problem is actually negative 16 plus 5. And again, different signs when we're adding. So we're going to get our absolute value, 16 and 5, subtract. Right? We would be left with 11, sign from the greater one, negative 11. All right? We'll do one more that is a fraction. Let's do, I'm going to pick a good one. Mm, what's a 38? Okay. Let's say I have this problem. Negative 5 twelfths minus 3 tenths. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it as an addition problem. So 5 twelfths plus negative 3 tenths. Then I need to find a common denominator. We can do 60. So this would be 5. This would be 6. That's going to give us 25 over 60, negative 25 over 60, plus negative 18 over 60. All right. And we know we're adding numbers with the same sign, so our answer is just going to be negative. Add them, that'll give you 43 over 60. And that is chapter one. Can you find the absolute value and can you add and subtract positive and negative rational numbers?